Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode one of a brand new Let's Play. We are playing Antherion, the open world, party based, old school CRPG that is also modern. It's a newer game released, I don't know, a handful of years ago. But uh, it is old school in design, so we're going to be playing that. I want to wish everybody uh, welcome after my break, and this is the first video coming back. It's actually Thanksgiving night, but you guys won't see this until the first, so today would be the first then when you watch this. Um, yeah, I actually felt like playing and starting now, so... I don't know if I'm going to play more after this episode, but it just kind of got in me to play tonight. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what happens. All right, we're loading up the graphics and sounds and the game data or fix software. All right, so here we are. We have no option screen, so let's go ahead and click start. All right, so we've got a four person party cool about this game a lot of things cool about it but a lot of classes racer races um, in the game so you receive 20 skill points to allocate as you see fit for your class oh that's with a custom class okay so our classes are warrior warriors are a fierce breed and are unmatched in the art of wielding melee weapons they're capable of dealing massive amounts of damage at close range a thief. Almost nothing in Antherion is off limits to a good thief. Thieves are proficient in the art of lockpicking, and they are particularly important when you consider that there are no known spells for defeating locks in Antherion. Interesting. The sage relies primarily on deep arcane knowledge to perform feats of potion mixing and identification. Fighters are the most well-rounded, able to both take and deal considerable damage. They are a helpful addition to any party. Rangers are highly skilled with a bow and arrow, allowing them to deal considerable damage while taking very little themselves. Grey Wizards are adept in the school of Grey Magic. Grey Wizards are able to bend the world around them to their will. Uh, white Wizards are adept in the school of White Magic. White Wizards use their arcane knowledge to heal and protect themselves and their allies. And Black Wizards are adept in the school of Black Magic. They use Their main focus is on cutting down their foes with a vast repertoire of offensive skills. And then we have a custom class out of all these skills here. So interesting. Um, I think I would have to go with the first player. Um, I'm going to go with a warrior. Now let's look at the... Well, we'll see about that. But let's look at the races. We've got... Necrophil, a magical race. The origins of the Necrophils are unknown to all but their creators. Their otherworldly origins make them well suited toward the Black Arts, and they get different attributes based on the race. Undead are an ancient subterranean race living mostly in cold, dark places beneath Antherion's surface. Among Antherion's population, they are objects of much curiosity, sparking, sparking numerous mythologies and folk tales. Wolfkin, hailing from Northwind Province, the Wolfkin are a strong race built to stand up against almost anything. They make excellent warriors and fighters due to their hardiness. Human, the most politically adept of the seven races, humans have ruled Antherion since the Uprising. Their mild disposition makes them one of the most balanced races. Falmer are a subterranean race of misfits. They are looked upon with suspicion by the other races. Falmer tend to make a living as criminals and bandits. As such, they make excellent thieves and archers. Historically the most dominant race, orcs were recently deposed and now find themselves set as outcasts in an increasingly modern and liberalizing society. What they lack in brains, they more than make up for in bronze. Orcs make first-class warriors. Elf, the oldest of the seven races, elves have populated the forest of Antherion for thousands of years. They make excellent rangers and magic practitioners. And then we're back to necrophil. So... Let's see here. Wolfkin. Um, let's look at the attributes while we're here. Strength increases melee damage and determines how many pounds of worth of inventory you can carry. Dexterity determines your maximum action points, increases all weapon accuracy, and increases damage done with bows. Intelligence determines your total amount of spell points. 
Wisdom increases your chance to successfully cast a magical spell in addition to making all spells moderately more powerful. Constitution determines your total amount of hit points, and luck affects everything you do. We've got hit points, your health from which all damage gets deducted. Spell points, every spell requires a certain amount of spell points to cast. Action points determines your range of movement during combat. So, I'm thinking about an orc. 20 strength, 10 dex, 15 constitution. How about an orc warrior? Um, we'll go with a female. And there's five faces to choose. Um... kind of like that one. How about Griselba? Griselba. That's our first character. So we've got a warrior. Um, I definitely want to have a thief in there. And for the thief, Felmer would make a good thief, or perhaps yeah, let's go with a Felmer thief, male oh, I like that wow, lots of cool faces for them let's go with that um, he has 5 action points 50 spell points with a high intelligence 20 decks, which we like. Um, oh, we didn't look at the skills over here. Okay. Uh, his name will be... Catsius. Catsius. All right, so the skills for Griselba are two-handed melee 25, governs your proficiency with two-handed melee weapons, and nothing else. Um, I'm wondering if I should go custom and kind of custom this out. I don't know yet. Um, Catsius has pickpocketing 15. Pickpocketing skills automatically used. Oh, your party's highest pickpocketing skills automatically used. That's good to know. We won't have to fiddle around and pick Catsius every time. Um, note, there's no known lockpicking spell in Antherion. Okay, so that looks good. For player three... I really like the idea of Sage for lore and alchemy. Um, does not have any black magic ability. What I'd like to do for this Sage is go ahead and go custom. And go... put five points into okay gray magic spells require this skill in order to be cast higher levels in this skill will make your gray magic spells more powerful and more accurate note characters starting the game with at least 15 points in gray magic will receive the spell polymorph minor heal or firebolt Um, I'd actually like my sage to be skilled in gray magic. And he's not going to be an orc. Um, she's going to be... Probably a necrophil. She will be named Zerda. Wait. Lady Zerda? Zerda? Lady Zerda? Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. And our fourth player, I'm, we pretty much have to go with 
a white wizard, a healer. Probably go ahead with an elven. I didn't pick her face. Lady Zerda. And an elven white wizard. Now that looks like um the guy from Rivendell, the leader of the elves in Lord of the Rings. Ro Rohan or what is his name? Let's actually go with him and name him. Rosan. Um, 20 intelligence. Oh, only 5 wisdom. That's not going to work very well. Looks like we're either picking human. Undead or necrophil. I guess we'll go undead and his name will be wait these are real undead right an ancient subterranean okay he will be called Bart the ghoul? <laughs> I don't really want to call him a ghoul, though. Um, I can't think of a name right now. He's got 25 white magic. And I'd like to do a custom for him as well. Whoops. And I'd like to go 20 in white magic and 5 in foraging. We have no persuasive character. So I'm going to have to go custom here too. Definitely want pickpocketing, definitely want lock picking, but I also want persuasion. Mm. I guess she's pretty much fine. You know what though? Let's go ahead and custom them all out. I want to get 5 points of barter and then 15 of two-handed melee. And for you, your name is going to be Bartrad. Bartrad, Lady Zerda, Catsius, and Griselba. All right, so that looks like our party. Um, we have a orc warrior essentially a felmore thief a necrophil sage with some gray magic and a white wizard undead with some healing magic so we're kind of lacking some punch which is kind of why i went the, the warrior route because she can essentially be our total offense and I guess there's backstabbing and that sort of thing, but he's not really too skilled in the attack or anything aspects. We do have good lore and alchemy and gray magic. I'm wondering if I shouldn't put that into black magic instead. Eh, we'll go with gray magic. See what happens. All right, I'm going to click start. Um, let me all tab out for a second. No, that's not what I wanted. Let me alt tab here. Um, can I just alt tab to the desktop? 
We've been recording for 15 minutes. Okay. So... I guess we'll click start. Nestled deep within a faraway corner of the cosmos was a small lush world that would come to be known by its inhabitants as Antherion. Do I have to click? Yeah. After a long civil war spanning thousands of years, Antherion was united, ushering in an unprecedented era of peace and prosperity. But recently, clouds have begun to gather on Antherion's horizon. A dark and unnerving energy took hold of the citizenry. While no one was sure just what it was, everyone seemed to have sensed its presence. Without any warning, the sleepy village of Shadowbrook was attacked and completely annihilated. The destruction of Shadowbrook led to a climate of fear and unrest across the land. Deep below the village of Shadowbrook was a dungeon where criminals condemned to death would await their untimely fates. During the attack, the, prison gu the prison's guards rushed to the surface to defend Shadowbrook, leaving behind four unguarded prisoners. An hour later, when the guards still hadn't returned, one of the prisoners decided to use a rusted nail he hidden away to pick his cell's iron lock. So here we are. We're in a cell. Um... I take it Cassius has the rusty nail. Let's go ahead and before we start, if we right click a portrait, we get our inventory screen where you can manage your party's equipment. To select an item from a stack, hold shift and left click. You can give items to other party members by selecting an item and then clicking on another character's portrait or in-game graphic. To use an item like a potion or a book, just right click it. Notice the maximum carry weight in the bottom right corner. If this number is exceeded, then your character's encumbered. 48 out of 100, we have no gold. She's wearing shackles, which have an armor of one, and rags, which have an armor of one. That's it, no weapon or anything. Everybody has shackles and rags. All right, so let's just X out there. We've got a map. Turn on and off. Travel map can't in dungeon spells this is your spell book you can select spells from various magic schools by clicking on the tabs at the top to cast or ready a spell simply left click its button you can also right click a spell to select it and then drag it down to any of the quick spell slots at the bottom of the screen use spell quick slots can be deleted or moved by right clicking them again once a spell quick slot is set you can use the number hotkey displayed to quickly cast it so our party has literally one spell, which is Minor Heal, which stores a moderate amount of health to a single target. Right click it, and we'll put it down there. Number one, we've got a potion, three potion slots, we've got sleep. The menu, go ahead and save. Always like when we can name our save. Um, quests. This is your journal where all of your active quests are logged. To read a detailed description of a quest, click on its header in the top window. To see your completed quest, click the finish tab. Current, escape the dungeon. Find a way to escape this place and finished. Stats. At the top of the stats interface are two tabs, general and skills. When your party levels up, each of your party members receive points to allocate to attributes and skills. You can mouse over each attribute and skill to get a detailed description of them. So we have zero available points, zero available points. Next level in 130, 130 for everybody. And alchemy. So we need a recipe to do that. All right, let's open the door and continue on. I can't take the torch. Lock very easy, but we're out of lock picks. It's very dark in here. Some containers, a box. Nothing in it. A 
barrel, nothing in it. Ah. Leather sandals, value 17, armor 1. Plain robe, value 14, weight 5, armor 1. And a wooden buckler, weight 10, armor 3. And clothes, armor 1. Um... Alright, that's pretty cool. We will go ahead and equip them. Two lockpicks. And a torch. Two apples. Food. Oh my. Longbows. Value 27. Range damage 3. Crooked staff. Value 26. Two handed damage. 24 arrows, a saber, two-handed damage, seven, value 80. Two short swords, so Griselba is encumbered. So we've got to equip some of the stuff. So she's two-handed, so let's go ahead and get her the saber. Um, can she also equip a longbow? No. Amulet, cape, weapon, ring. Oh, wait, she can't equip a second weapon. And switch between them, I guess. She has no, um... Let's see, short sword would go to you. And a short sword would go to you, I guess? Undead has more strength. Lockpicks go to Cassius. Torch, she can keep. Sandals, let's put them on. Where do we put sandals? Oh, here. Take off the shackles. Oh, and it shows up on them. Very cool. Let's get you a pair of sandals. You a pair of sandals. And you a pair of sandals. Plain robe, armor one. Clothes, armor one. These have more weight, so she should we uh, wear them. Ah, looking good. Plain robe. Um, let's give a plain robe to you, I guess, and the clothes to our mages. Two-handed, so she can't use the buckler, but... Oh, he's already encumbered, my goodness. Shackles drop. Mm. Ah, clothes are a value of six. Maybe I shouldn't have dropped them. Um, let's actually give you a longbow. And the shackles are worth something, too. They're worth nine. Their weight is so heavy, though. Um, let's go ahead and equip him. Okay, you don't have to equip the lockpicks. That looks good. I don't know why we have all these cro oh they're worth 27 let's keep them then give you the arrows lady Z zerda and i think that should do it yeah i don't know why we need food i haven't seen a food indicator but anyway switch. See if that did anything in here. I don't see anything, but can we quick save? F5? No. Looks like there's just only one save. Oh, there is a quick save. What button would it be? Let's try the buttons here. F8? F10? F11? F12 is a screenshot. Huh, it's none of the uh, F buttons. We'll have to figure that out. Alright, so should we lockpick this door? Very easy. Broke a lockpick. Oh boy, 42% chance I shouldn't be testing it. Or should I? On the skeleton, we have a pestis root ingredient. Three arrows. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna like this game. Lock very easy. I don't know if I should waste my lock picks on it. Let's go ahead and burn up that torch. Oh, he's got a plus next to his name. What does he have a plus of? Five available skill points. Huh. Can't see us well. I don't know what to spend them on right now, so chill out on that. Let's have her... the tour so we can see a bit more. Come back here. Can't interact with any of this stuff. Ooh, combat. You're now in combat. One by one, your party members will take turns. After your party is finished, all other creatures, friend or foe, will take their turns. A turn is finished when you run out of action points, the little green dots underneath your player or player's portrait. Hmm, seen here. Walking one space or using a potion consumes one AP, while attacking or casting a spell uses all your remaining AP unless you're hasted or slowed. Your total amount of AP is based on your character's dexterity attribute. If you wish to end a character's turn early, press spacebar. Combat will end when either all of your foes are dead or if you've gone far enough away from them. Note that when casting a targeted spell, your caster's distance from his target will affect spell accuracy. Hitting V in combat will target visibility mode, which makes it easier to see the positions of your foes. You can also enable the combat grid in the gameplay options menu. What options menu? Oh, there's a rat right there. Okay. Um. Here they come. Alright. Um. Can't swing with torch. Okay, that's what V does. How do I switch weapons on the quick like? I don't know the. Gotta put the torch away, I guess. 69% chance of hitting. Missed. Um, did four damage, 20, uh, come up here and shoot the rat, ah, 67% chance, wow, did more than Cassius, ouch, ouch, missed, three damage, I want you... Come over here and don't you have the bow equipped? How do I shoot the bow? Can she not shoot it? Okay, C is character. B e, spells. H says not in combat. T says can't in dungeon. R says not in combat. Q says... Oh, Q is quick save. Okay. I don't know. I'm trying to kill this one rat. Ouch. Finally a hit and a kill. Um... There's the bow. Nice. Wow, he's pretty strong. Where's his sword, though? Yeah, we're punching. For some reason, we're not equipped. Are we? Not travel map. Inventory. I equipped it in the wrong... Oh, swap weapon X. I equipped it in the wrong slot. There we go. Ugh. So we took a beating because of that. Everybody's got equipped in the right slot. And why aren't you carrying your buckler? 
Oh, that's a swap too. My bad. Yeesh. Hmm. <clears throat> and Bartrad was just doing that damage with his bare hands. Which is pretty impressive. Alright. So some skulls here. Let's go ahead and re-equip the torch. Alright, let's quick save. Let's try these other buttons. R, I guess, is rest. T is travel. H is alchemy. B is spells. Okay. I think I got it. Um... Container. Shackles. Lizard tail ingredient. More shackles. Bunch more shackles. Can't take any weapons off the wall. Dang, can't check the weapon racks. That's too bad. Um, I guess go further in this direction. Oh, a fish. Food. I think food probably heals. Oh. Combat room. They haven't spotted us yet. A blind rat and a rat. Um. Let's quick save. Let's go get him. Forty-three percent chance. Take it. Three rats. X. Eighteen damage. Um. Finish him off. Nice. And our undead is a pretty strong warrior. Well, I wouldn't say pretty strong, but fairly strong. 15 damage. Four. Twelve. Okay, he is pretty strong. Very nice. And we've got a rock. I don't know. We'll take it, I guess. Oh, you checked the remains for stuff. Six gold. Before I come in here, let me head back and check the remains of the other rats. If there are remains. Uh, whatever was here is no longer with us here. All right. Come on in here then, and uh, nothing in the container. Tattered shoes, value 34, armor 2. Another rock and garbage. Uh, you know, it's an RPG. You never know when you need some garbage. I mean, why not just take it? Ooh, 15 gold and 5 gold. Another rock. Why would you need garbage? Don't ask. I don't know. Some quests. Somebody needs garbage, I guess. <laughs> Alright. Uh, it looks like we need a little bit of healing. Let's see if he can eat a food. And it would help. Value 15. Let's see what happens when he eats a food. Huh, can't. I guess it gets eaten automatically. Hmm. Alright, let's check out um, the Tattered Shoes Armor 2. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put them on. 
cool little pointy shoes. Let's quick save. Locked very easy. 42% chance is not very easy to me, but on steps up, okay. I like our mini map over here. It tells us what's going on. You know what? I'm gonna be a fool and try it. Ran out of lock picks. Eh, uh, YOLO. You only lock once. Oh, storage. Nine gold. Eight gold and twelve arrows. Excellent. Another torch. Excellent. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back up this way. Only run if I hold shift. No. And maybe head down this way. Oh. Another torch. I apologize for the Steam notifications popping up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that off for next episode, probably. If I can figure out how. Alright, I think we've explored... Other than these locked places we can't get into, we've explored everything up here. Oh, I could rest. Rather than do anything else. Sleep. This is your sleep interface. Sleep allows you to restore your party's HP and SP, ah, but requires food to do so. The amount of food required depends on the amount of HP and SP your party members have. Once your party's HP and SP has been fully restored, you can sleep simply to pass the time without having to use food. Costs one food to sleep. Well, everybody's kind of bit battered up. One hour? You know what, let me quick save before this and then try it. Let's sleep one hour. All right, our health went all the way up. We used one food, cool. Very cool. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's head down here. Let's quick save in here and check how long I've been playing. Thirty-seven minutes. Um, gonna light a smoke here, and once the smoke is done, the episode is done. Let's continue. All right, so we can't get in that door, which was probably some sort of storage cache, I'd imagine. So we have to come up this way. Oh. Okay, time to put the torch away. Can't check any of that stuff. Meru. Thank the gods! Just when I thought time had run out, you show up. I'm an investigator sent here by a very important client to gather reconnaissance that might help piece together what took place here. I found something which I think will very much interest my client, but I cannot risk trying to smuggle it out of here. If the guards posted at the entrance searched me and found it, it would almost certainly mean my head. Please take this mysterious ear to my client. I don't know the name, but he wears a violet hooded robe and spends most of his time at a hole in the wall bar called the Seaside Tavern in the city of Astralin. To get there, you just follow the main road south. The tavern is located in the southeast corner of the city. Be very careful and not tell anyone of our conversation. Hmm. Oh my. There was a bloody massacre here. Of the graphics, though, very vibrant and cool. Um, oh, nice six gold human flesh. Again, it's an RPG. 
Take what you can get. Oh, I can look in these barrels. I'm not going to take more garbage. Wooden club. Two-handed damage. Eight. Nice. And a pestis fruit. That <clears throat> might be better than the saber. It is. Very cool. And uh, just hang on to the saber for now. Uh-huh. Ahead. Is this a computer? No. Some sort of container. A strange sigil on the floor. You have to watch out for secrets, uh, buttons to press and stuff on the walls. Much like in a Vernum game. Or a Jeff Fogel game. Hmm... Let's head through this south pass. Quick save. So the uh, guards don't bother me. Wow, giant mushrooms. What are these things? Crabs. Oh, we're fighting the crabs. I see. Crabby. Take that, Crabby. 19. Can't go in the water. Ouch. There we go. Nice. shot at him. Youch. Oh boy. Oh my. Uh, you move. Because you're going to get rocked. Thank you. Griselba. Crab meat. Value 10. I don't see anything here we can plunder. In the meat. Oh, more crabs. Um, okay. Oh, well, there's three of them. I might want to save that for next time. Uh, is this the edge of the map, or can we... Oh, what's this? A chest with 104 gold in it, son. It's a nice find. I'm going to save here. And call it episode one. My cigarette's not out yet, but oh well. There's the options. Okay, let's check out the options then. That all looks good. Oh, quality we want high. Oh, resolution is the best we've got. Auto, full screen, on. Keep it off. Bobbleheads on. What if we turn bobbleheads off? Heading on combat grid off. Fix locks. Will require skill requirements instead of percentages. Oh. Play on difficulty normal for now. Console minimal. Oh, I want the classic console. Hot keys. Pretty much know all that stuff already. Oh, pickpocket is right click. Party cycle tab. Quick load is L. Open the last loop container is G. Yeah. Alright, now the quality should be high, I guess. Um, I turned off bobbleheads. Does that make their heads smaller? I mean, it should, right? But. Turn it back on and see what happens. Oh, they bob. I want the bobbing on. So let me go ahead and save here. I want to say thank you for joining me. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and ate a lot of good food and had some good company and everything was well for you guys. 
Thank you for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, Bible, I am back now. It is the first. We're going to be continuing some other LPs and starting maybe a few new ones. We'll see. But uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Much love, peace, and joy. Fluent out. Take care, everybody.